This one I'm excited about. This is the all new Toyota Grand Highlander. It is classified as a mid-size crossover. It's a three row, seven passenger or eight passenger SUV. And if you know anything about me, my history, my family, I really like having three row crossovers. You might be saying I've heard of the Highlander but not the Grand Highlander. Well, this is based on the Highlander platform. It's just a bit bigger. Both are three row crossovers, but this has an all new exterior and interior design, which we're going to check out throughout this video. And of course, in Toyota's lineup, it slots above the Highlander and below the Sequoia, which is their biggest big SUV that's also a three row which I also really like. But there are definitely good points to be getting this, the Grand Highlander over the Sequoia. But let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's get it started. So the Grand Highlander is available in four grade levels. You have the Hybrid XLE, the Hybrid Limited, the Hybrid Max Limited, and then the Hybrid Max Platinum. What we have here is the Hybrid Limited, so it's kind of the mid-grade that you can get. Those grade levels also show that every single Grand Highlander is a hybrid vehicle, whether it be the base hybrid or the Hybrid Max, which is a new moniker that Toyota has been using, basically a hybrid engine, but maxing out uh, power over efficiency, it seems. We're gonna dive into the engine options here in just a bit, but first let's check out the exterior design. So the exterior here shows the new kind of direction that the Toyota crossovers are getting these days. It's not a dramatic difference from what we had, but it is a nice change. We do have the black grille here on this limited trim, and we do have the chrome bit that goes below the lights, but then up and over the Toyota logo. Those headlights are full LED headlights, and we do have LED fog lights here. It is a sharp and aggressive front end, and reminds me a lot of kind of the previous generation of Lexus GX. Moving around the side, our wheels are 20 inch alloy wheels with some nice Yokohama all season tires. We do have body color side mirrors with turn signal indicators integrated into the side mirror. There's also a puddle lamp integrated that spells out the Grand Highlander name. When you open up the door, you also have a Toyota logo that will display on the ground. So it's kind of two different logos all in one setup. The profile of the Grand Highlander is a large and sort of boxy one, but it is a nice look. Around the rear, you do have the full LED taillights. The Grand Highlander nameplate is a bit subdued, being the same body color. We do have the HEV badge, saying that this is a hybrid electric vehicle, all-wheel drive badge, and our limited trim nameplate. And the paint color that we have here is Coastal Cream. It is an off-white, uh, almost tannish color. It's probably going to be hard to tell on the video. It's even hard to tell in person. It looks white until you put it next to another white car, and then you can definitely see it is a cream color. And overall, I really like the style. It's also a really good size. It has a 116.1 inch wheelbase, a full length of 201.4 inches, a height of 72.1 inches, a width of 78.3 inches, and a ground clearance of eight inches. And with that, let's go ahead and pop the hatch and check out the cargo volume. Now this is a power lift gate. It can power pop from a button inside, from a button on the key, or if you got the key in your pocket with a kick from underneath. So it is a full hands-free lift gate. And as I say with all three row crossovers, the cargo volume is really important to you or not super important to you. To me, it's always been very important for three row crossovers because if you got this thing packed with the family, you still need room behind that third row to pack luggage or groceries. If you're constantly having to fold the third row down to be able to get groceries in or get some uh, gear in that you need, it kind of negates having that third row. This one I'm happy to report has 20.6 cubic feet of cargo volume. That is quite a bit, not really uh, best in class, but it is really close to it. I own the Volkswagen Atlas, which has 
just around 20 or 21 and the uh, Kia Telluride has just around 20 to 21. So this is right up there with those and those are some of the best that you have. And that was one of the big misses with the Highlander is that yes, you had a third row, but no, you did not have much room behind that third row. And the third row was very cramped. So this one, a bigger platform with more cargo volume, with more room for the third row is a great deal for larger families. Of course, that third row can be folded down and you can get 57.9 cubic feet of cargo volume. And then with folding the second row down, you have a total of 97.5 cubic feet, which is a lot. You also have a 120 volt house type plug back here, a JBL speaker and a floor that lifts up and exposes uh, the jack and stuff like that for the vehicle. And before we can move in and start talking about the interior, let's go ahead and close this up. We'll go pop the hood and check out the engine that powers this vehicle. So as I hinted at while talking about the trims, there are two engine options available for the Grand Highlander. This one that we have is more of the base engine option. It is the hybrid. So even if you get the base vehicle, you're getting a hybrid vehicle. This is a 2.5 liter four cylinder hybrid pushing 245 horsepower, 175 pound feet of torque and is matched up to an eCVT. This setup can tow up to 3,500 pounds. And like it showed with the badge on the back, it is an all wheel drive with a trail mode. We'll talk more about that as we jump in and drive it. We'll talk about how the power feels from this base hybrid engine, but obviously the limited can be trimmed up with the hybrid max. And then if you get the top of the line, the platinum, you automatically get the hybrid max. That is a 2.4 liter turbocharged engine. Again, also hybrid, but that pushes 362 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque. And this is the same engine that we drove the Toyota Crown in. And it's pretty good in that Crown. So I assume it would be good in this, even though it is heavier. Hopefully I'll get a chance to drive that one in the future. So if you're interested in that, leave a comment down below and I'll try to make it happen. And if it's towing that you're looking for, that tows up to 5,000 pounds. So if you're gonna be towing a lot, you might opt up for the Hybrid Max. With that, let's go ahead and jump inside and start taking a look at the interior, starting with those rear seats. So taking a look at the rear seats real quick, you can see there is a handle up here to fold this forward and you can push it up easily. And that's a pretty big gap to be able to get into the rear seats. I'm not gonna jump back there right now, but uh, it was easy enough for the kids. And the rear seats are, like I said, decently roomy. I did have my big kids back here they complained a little bit, but uh, they managed. Our daily vehicle is a Kia Carnival minivan, so they're used to a little bit more room, but you have three cup holders on either side and your own USB charging port on either side. And the seats can kind of recline a little bit if you're a bit taller and need that extra headroom. All in all, the rear seats are very competitive with the top in the class moving back to the middle seat you can see it locks into place and you've got handles down here for sliding the seat back and reclining the seat we can jump in and you can see we got the two captain's chairs here in the middle row you can get a bench seat it is an optional extra but that does change this from a seven passenger to an eight passenger which is fantastic we do have a middle console here with some cup holders there are quite a bit of cup holders in this vehicle i believe 13. these captain's chairs are heated seats that you can control right here you can control your rear climate back here you have another 120 volt house type plug your own USB charging back here, your own air vents. And the seats are really comfortable and I fit really well here being a 6'1", full grown adult. Of course, that is me pushed way back, but you still have a pretty good amount of room back there 
even if I scoot up, I can be still comfortable, more comfortable than sitting on an airplane. And they have a ton of room back there. With that, let's go ahead and jump into the driver's seat, start taking a look at the tech, then we'll get this thing out on the road. All right, we're here in the interior, the driver's seat, and again, it's a nice place to be, nice seats. This is the black interior. We do have a little bit of fake wood trim, which I could do without, but uh, it's okay. It helps break up the interior, but it is kind of a cheaper material. These seats though are really nice, leather, perforated, white stitching. They're heated, cooled, power adjusting, really nice and really comfortable. We did do uh, a pretty good trip in this thing, and as a driver, super comfortable. Again, on the doors, you have the fake wood trimming. It carries along to the dash. Here on the passenger side, you do have your own USB charging port there with a bit of a tray that you can throw a phone or something in as it's charging. You have a dash that's kind of fake leather, but it looks fine. The materials here in the console, again, kind of cheap plastic, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead and kick it on. It is a push button start. It is a hybrid, so it starts up without the big engine noise, and then it will kick on in a bit, depending on your battery level. You can see our 12.3 inch Toyota audio multimedia system with the 11 speaker JBL system. And we saw one of those speakers in the rear. Obviously the screen can show a lot of different information, including our energy flow here. It's the same new system that uh, we've seen in the rest of the Toyota and Lexus lineup that we've driven recently. I do have some gripes with it, but overall it's pretty easy to navigate, easy to figure out what's going on. So I can't rag on it too bad, especially with the way that the old uh, Toyota infotainment system used to be. Moving down a bit, you have all your AC and heat controls, the buttons for your heated and cooled seats. You have your vents below that. And then below that you have a few charging port options. This interfaces with the infotainment system and charges. This just charges. You do have a wireless charger down here. So you can throw your phone down there and wirelessly charge it. It's not that grippy of a surface, so if you don't have a grippy case, it will slide around. We can, of course, plug in the phone and get Apple CarPlay. It also has Android Auto. Our gear shifter is just a traditional gear shifter. No trying to reinvent the wheel here. Put it into reverse. We do get a good backup camera. There's no 360 in this vehicle. Unfortunately, it is large enough that it would be very useful to have one. Beside the gear shifter, you do have cup holders and a lot of just console space, electronic parking brake, auto hold button. Behind that, our traction control button. These are our drive modes, an EV mode button, and a hill descent button. As you can see, the drive modes are Eco, Sport, Normal, and Trail. Trail because it is the all-wheel drive. I'm not a huge fan of this placement and uh, having to display each mode as a separate button instead of just having a turn dial. There were a few times driving that I just rested my hand here and hit the Sport button. So take that for what you will. It's kind of uh, not needed to take up this much space. Your armrest is decently padded here. Really large console area goes down pretty far. And you've got an extra little tray here in the middle. Moving on to the steering wheel. Nice, sort of thick steering wheel. You've got all your controls on either side. Very easy to adjust to. Your cruise settings here, which did take me a little bit to figure out. I'll talk more about that as we drive it. No paddle shifters or anything not needed in this vehicle. And then to the left, you have your trunk pop, turning on the accessory plug functionality, heated steering wheel, and your automatic bright lights. And then some buttons back here that are hard to see that uh, adjust the brightness and different things for your odometer. Memory seat buttons. And then we have our 12.3 inch full color driver display. This can be switched up a little bit. Whenever you do put it in different modes, it does switch up and give you like red for sport more green for eco, blue for normal. And then your trail mode just uh, gives you an indication right there. And then you can thumb through a couple of different options for what you wanna see. All pretty standard, 
not super customizable. But at the end of the day, even with some cheaper materials, it's overall a really nice interior with some good technology. But let's go ahead and get this thing out on the road, start talking about the drive, and see what we think about the safety technology and the power from the hood and the efficiency for this Grand Highlander. All right, so we put it in drive and start going. Obviously, hybrid engine allows it to be nice and quiet going. You do have an EV mode, which will keep it in electric mode as much as possible. It does disengage itself pretty quickly, even if you've got a uh, decent charge on the battery system. Not quite as good as some of the hybrids with EV mode, definitely not as good as a plug-in hybrid with an EV mode, but it is a nice smooth ride. You can hear the engine under the hood it does sound okay. Nothing super special, nothing to write home about, but uh, when you really push on it, it can sound okay, but you do hear the engine a lot. It's not a super quiet vehicle. That being said, the wind noise is really low. Being up on the highway, you don't get a lot of wind resistance, even for being a big vehicle, which is really nice, but also means that uh, you'll catch yourself speeding quite often, or at least I did myself. When you're up on the highway at 70 mile an hour, you don't really feel like you're going that quick because you don't get that uh, wind sensation. So you feel yourself going quicker than you should be. Again, we did a uh, bit of a road trip in this thing had it packed full with the family six people in here total with two in the rear seats and while my uh, youngest son that was in the back did complain a little bit he's getting pretty tall he still fit just fine as the driver i was very comfortable when it was cool in the morning you got heated seats heated steering wheel warms up in the afternoon in texas you got the cooled seat if you need it the air was working just fine, heater worked just fine, touching everything, trying to uh, set navigation from my phone, playing music for the family. All that was easy to do as a driver. We do have the Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, which is their newest uh, safety features. And again, those super easy to use, super easy to uh, control from the steering wheel. You do get sensors all around this car, even though you don't get the 360 uh, camera system, you do get 360 on the sensors. So it helps a bit with parking if you're in a tight spot and this is a big vehicle, but you also get radar guided cruise control and a lane keeping assist system when you put it into cruise. And we definitely use that as we jumped up on the highway and we're making a long trek. I had the radar guided cruise control on, had the lane keeping assist on, and it not only kept me from speeding, but uh, it keeps you safe, keeps you in the lanes really well. It might not be the absolute best at it on the market, but it did really well for what we used it for. There are two different modes to the cruise control. One of them, the car will actually complain to you that it's not uh, activated and you can't use it. But the other one, which is the lane keeping assist and radar guided cruise control, which is what I wanted to use, is activated so it took a little bit of fiddling with the controls to figure out exactly how to turn on the right mode and get it started but once i figured it out once it was easy to re-engage so no real problem there you do have the drive modes i really didn't play with them this week you have an eco mode that could help with keeping this thing more eco and having better fuel economy. We'll talk about the fuel economy here in just a sec. You also have the sport mode, which I'd never had the desire to push. It does get up and go just fine. With the sport mode, it feels basically the same. You might have a little bit tighter of steering, which is always nice. But uh, again, I drove it with normal mode. This is the all wheel drive and we do have that trail mode. I didn't take this thing off road. I didn't take it on a trail. I have no doubt that Toyota's all wheel drive system is fine. They've got a lot of great all wheel drive vehicles. If I was looking for an all wheel drive vehicle, this probably wouldn't be my first or second or third choice, but I have no doubt that it would be okay. Of course, with it being heavier, bigger, it's always gonna affect your performance off road. Our fuel economy numbers for this vehicle is 36 MPG city, 
32 highway with a combined of 34. During my whole week of driving this thing all over the place, like I said, we put quite a few miles on it, highway and rural and in the middle of the city, we're averaging 30.7 miles per gallon. So for a three row larger crossover, that's pretty good in my opinion. And again, I didn't drive it in eco mode all week. Could have helped, but we just drove it like I would normally just jump in and drive it. So I think again, that's a pretty good number. And again, we did have it in the middle of a very city setting. We went to a couple of restaurants that were super packed and the parking lots were super packed and the parking spots were not meant for bigger vehicles for sure. We were still able to maneuver just fine, get parked just fine. And it was all in all a really good experience. With that, if you have a large family in the need of a three row crossover, you are probably wondering at this point, what's the price of this thing? Let's uh, find a place to pull back over. I'll talk about the price. We'll wrap it up talking about some of the competition and my final thoughts on this thing. And if I would recommend it for family, let's just cut into that. All right, guys, before we wrap it up, let's quickly talk about the price. Starting with the base XLE that starts at $45,000, which I'd like to drive that one because it's got the same power plants as this, which I already said I liked. And even if it has a bit cheaper of an interior with cloth seats, I'm completely fine with that. That 45K might be a great deal, although a lot of the competition does start cheaper than that. This one, the limited trim, base is at $51,000 and R review vehicle that you're seeing everything that we have here has a full msrp of fifty four thousand dollars if you're looking at the platinum trim with the hybrid max decked out it starts at fifty eight thousand dollars so i imagine that one the msrp would be at least 60 grand so you have a good range there but again if i was buying this for my family i would probably just stick with the base that i could get you don't need a ton of bells and whistles if you can afford it jump up into this limited trim and get a little bit of the extra safety features and nicer tech. But with that, let me jump out. We'll talk a little bit more about the competition available and I'll give you some of my final thoughts and we'll wrap this up. So I did already mention some of the competition that this thing has. The Volkswagen Atlas, the Kia Telluride, the Hyundai Palisade, just to name a few of the top contenders in this class. And after a full week of driving the Grand Highlander and doing some trips with the family, I can say that the Grand Highlander definitely delivers on its promises. It is a larger version of an already great vehicle in the Highlander. I like the design. The tech inside is nice. It is a comfortable vehicle to drive even long distance. The technology inside helps with that as well. It was large enough for the whole family. Even if my kids are getting too big for really being comfortable in the third row, they didn't complain too much, but we still had room in the rear, even with them sitting in the third row. The Grand Highlander definitely gets a thumbs up from me. If, if you're shopping in the market, it's definitely worth taking a look at. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about the Grand Highlander. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. You should also subscribe to the channel if you're into automotive reviews. We do a different review every week. Also go check out txgarage.com where we do a lot of written reviews as well as event news coverage over there. It's a great website with a lot of great authors, not just myself. But with that, that's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching.